Good morning. Okay, I was going through my usual process this morning, and something different came upon me, guys. Um, you ever had that feeling that the creator wants you to do something, and he kind of shoves it in your face? Well, that's what happened to me this morning. I was doing my thing, scrolling my Facebook, you know, checking out information for you guys. And a post came across my Facebook that I hadn't seen before. And it's an old post. And I normally don't read those posts like that. But for some reason, this one made me stop and read. And then I felt the creator lay something on me. And I had to do something. And, well, this is what I do. I pull out the soapbox, guys. So, I pulled out the soapbox on this, and I'd appreciate it if you stayed, because it's important. It's very important. So, here you go. Messages. <laughs> this is a public service message. Yeah, that's what this is. And it's done with love, guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crazy Country Cube Hunter. And if you're a crazy friend, well, this isn't one of our normal videos. Yes, I pulled out my soapbox. And, well, it may be a tearjerker. But we need to discuss this as a community. So, please stay. Give the video a thumbs up and share. Because it may affect someone that you know. And, of course, if you're not a crazy friend or a subscriber, as I said, this isn't one of our normal videos. But my channel is geared towards helping you, kind of no matter what it is, whether it be with needing a cheap meal, needing to buy something cheap, needing a prayer, needing a community, needing a friend, needing a comment you didn't ask for, and just needing information sometimes, or an epiphany, which is what I just got, so I felt the need to share it with you. Going across my Facebook post this morning, I come across this Facebook post about a 12-year-old boy who committed suicide over bullying. Um, there's nothing different about this 12-year-old boy, except for he may have been rather small in statute. I mean, he looked like your average boy. Matter of fact, he looked like a wonderful little boy. You know, more than likely, there was something wrong with the bully that was bullying him. Such as he was oversized, perhaps. Uh, maybe he was made fun of at home. Yeah, but he felt the need to pass on the bullying to someone else. Now, I'm 62 years old. And those of us that are in my age group, we grew up a different way. You got bullied, you got your butt kicked. And nobody cared, really. Nobody cared. You could go home and tell your mama, if you were lucky... Your mama or your daddy might go over to the other kid's house say something to their parent. But, let me tell you, if that was done because that other parent had to come to that parent's house, you got an ass whipping, okay? Because that parent had to come to my house. Well, you didn't get an ass whipping because you bullied somebody. You got an ass whipping because, well, I got involved and I got dressed down over your behavior, okay? Because I was responsible for it. Because you're a kid. Okay. You didn't see mass suicides from children over bullying in our era. Not until the 2000s did you see this. And there's several reasons for it. Okay. A couple of different reasons. One, mainly, is because... We don't discuss what is expected of us as human beings in our home anymore. It used to be, even if your parents didn't go to church, somebody in your family did. Somebody in your family seen that you knew what was expected of you for the price of breathing and using this planet. Okay? Either your parents told you directly, or you were made to read the Bible, or you were made to go to church. And when I say made, because most children are made to go. You may continue to go, but most children are made to go. At least until 
they learn the basics. Okay? And basics being the Ten Commandments, what's expected of you, okay? And what came before you. And I won't say I agree wholeheartedly with that book, but what I do agree with is that no matter what, the bottom line is the same, and the bottom line is love each other, no matter what holy book you're looking at, and treat each other with love and respect. Okay, bottom line, as for what's expected of us, we were taught suicide was a sin. But we were instilled with the Ten Commandments, if nothing else, basically. And a lot of us were exposed to this in school and on plaques and in public buildings because there were the Ten Commandments plastered everywhere. And at least your kid could ask, gee, Mom, what is that? And you would explain, well, those are the rules of, of life. Okay? Now, I don't care whether you're religious or not. The Ten Commandments is rules of morality. Okay? Just straight up, rules of morality. And morals. And basically, how to make the world a better place. And even though, okay, suicide's not included in those rules, and it's not, you were exposed to the meaning of them. And most were exposed to the fact that suicide is supposedly a sin, okay? Doing harm to yourself or someone else is a sin, because your body is a temple, yada, 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 okay? Okay? We were exposed to that. So the thought of suicide to us was like, oh, oh no, we just got to hang, man. We got to hang. There was no, at least not on my count, was my mom back there cheering me on going, yeah, it'll be over soon. You'll be out of school. No, we just dealt with it. And a lot of us dealt with it in negative ways, being the 60s and the 70s. And, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But we made it to adulthood. And we had the opportunity to change. We had the opportunity to um, to do what we were put here for. Why we came here. Okay, we had that because we made it through the rough patch. Okay, that is one reason why these children commit suicide. They do not have this in their life. They've never been told that suicide was a sin. They've never been told that suicide was wrong. They've never been told killing yourself was wrong. They've never been told what the possible consequences of said action might be. Okay? But a lot of these children coming in, they know things that we don't know. They know them in their heart and their mind. And one of the things that they know that this door, that this world is a revolving door. Okay? And they can simply step out and they'll come back in. Yeah, I can hear you now rolling your eyes. Bible really does mean born again, people. Really. There's no other explanation for people that have past life experiences. And proof of it. Okay? So, yeah. Whatever's happening, we are making round trips. And because of man, that information... And, or all of that information was picked over and didn't leave us the full story. But in truth, yeah, we do make round trips. I won't say we come back as animals because I don't believe that we do. Um, it's possible if you are a lower vibration human being, such as, you know, a human being that should have been a dog to begin with, may come back as a dog. You know, I don't know the workings of God or heaven. But what I do know is that this needs to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is if we talk to our children. If we instill in our children that suicide is not an option. Okay? Simply not an option despite what they know. It is not an option. Because if you made it here, 
and all your parts are working. You made it through the portal of your mother's womb into this reality, this world. The Creator wanted you here. Okay? And we are extensions of the Creator. And we need to respect that. Okay? We really do. And if you don't teach your children anything else, teach them to respect that we are precious. Okay? We are precious beings. We are so precious that we are a jewel in the universe. Okay? I don't know what else to say. This is our solution. We have to talk to our children. We have to tell our children. We don't have to tell the children religious things if you don't want to be religious. That's fine. I'm not religious per se, but I am a believer. But believe in your children, believe in yourself, and believe in the reasons why you are here. You're not just here to breathe air and to fill space. Everybody has a purpose. Even if it is just to hold a space for another being. There's some of you that will understand what I'm saying. Some of you are going to think I'm a crackpot. But no matter what you think I am, please... Talk to your children. Let your children know that we are put here to live our life to the fullest despite what happens to us. You know, we can grow through it. We can get through it. We are made resilient this way. Okay? We are made to override this stuff with the right support. Okay. And the other thing is, don't take the bullying lying down. Okay. The guy was suspended a couple times. Not enough. Not enough. Because this is repeated harassment on this child. Not stopped repeated harassment. And if this was done to an adult... That person would have to answer legally, okay? Though he is a child. But he, I'm assuming, is 12 years old. And a 12-year-old is old enough to understand yes and no and why. So if you proceed, then we have these options. And they're legal options, okay? And I know it's terrible, to make your parents responsible for what your children do. But if you're not taking control of your child, and I can hear it, well, I work, they're in school. You're at home with that child at some point. Stop doing what you do and sit down with that child. If you know your child is a bully, you may have to bully your child so that he understands the nature of what he's doing. And I know that's a terrible thing to say, but have you ever have a, had a biter? You ever had a child that bites? A little one that bites people for no reason? You know, you know how you stop that? You bite it back. And that kid don't bite no more. Okay? Just say it. This has got to stop. Please. Talk to your friends. If you've got friends that have children. And you know your friends aren't religious, you know. Just casually, you know, conversation about this incident. You know? If you see it. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family if you see it. If you know there's somebody in your family that's being bullied and nothing's come of a solution. Okay? Okay? pull that child aside and you make sure that child understands that life is love despite what he thinks there is love there and there is more love than there is hate 
and that little twinge of hurt feelings or even physical pain is going to pass. Okay? Talk to your children. Don't overlook the bullying. Don't think they're okay because they're not. For whatever reason, these children coming through today are not as strong as our generation. We have to get them to that point. And if that means backtracking to look at what we were doing then and start doing it again, <clears throat> then maybe that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe bullying didn't bother us so much as kids because our mother and fathers bullied us in this generation. So we just rolled off our back. It was just another person giving us some crap. And so we learned to deal with crap. <sighs> Lord, help this family. Help anyone that's dealing with this situation. Help all the children, Lord. Please lead them to understand that there is light. And they are it. They just need to let it shine. Alright. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. And blessings. <clears throat>